so here we are, Guilty Gear Striv, and we're gonna rate the supers. Already kind of familiar with these, but now that we have a full roster, I've, I've realized, oh God, I never did rate the super for Guilty Gear Strive. Unfortunately, this isn't nearly going to be as impactful or as engaging or as interesting as XR'd rate the super, because what did XR'd rate the super have? Giant cinematic bullshit, right? That game got ridiculous huge insta kills which i think is even better to rate than the actual supers themselves but we don't get that in this game every character gets about two supers and there are clearly some that are better than others soul bad guy it, the epitome the epitome just a dude that does just a dude type things He has a Tyrant Rave. And even though Tyrant Rave is the essential, like, Shinku Hadouken equivalent, I think this is, like, most basic, like, right down the middle, a 5, right? 5 out of 10. So that's our primer. Our primer is that a basic super that looks like this. There we go. Basic super that looks like this is a 5 out of 10. Okay? All right, let's go from there. His other super. Significantly better, right? And a pretty damn cool super, right? I do think it's like, it goes up to an eight. I'll give it an eight. Significantly better, cooler looking super, because we're going on just how cool it looks. Could it be better? Yes, it could be better, but it's not bad. And it does feel very satisfying to actually land in a match. All right, so Kai, uh, the equivalent other Shoto of the game. I said it. Yeah, this thing wall breaks from everywhere. I do really love just a just little bit of appreciation here. There's a moment there of animation where it zooms in on the characters' faces where the game is animating on close to ones. For anyone that doesn't know what that means, there's like close to 24 to 30 actual frames of animation, of moving animation when it zooms in on their faces and you really get to see how smooth it looks. It's like, holy crap, that's crazy. Do I think the super itself is incredible? I'll give that one a six, right? I actually will give Ride the Lightning a little bit, a little bit more of a boost over Tyrant Rave in this game. I'll give it a six. However, he's got a couple more. So, and this is the super that, damn, I just realized, I never see anybody doing this. It looks great in this game, but it's clearly like a utility super in many ways. This thing is meant to like, apply pressure and keep pressure going, apply the shock state, all that kind of stuff. So it just doesn't have a lot of flash. It's just, it is what it is and that be the way it is. So to me, it's like a three. It gets pretty low. You can combo twice in a row, but I mean, that's not like, that's, that's, that's kind of cool, but just, if we're just judging things based on the supers themselves, it's not. It's really not anything special. It's like a three. Here's the big thing that Kai got in this game. Pretty dope. I mean, I have to give him credit. All these things get buffed. He does all this, like, other multi-hitting shit now. Right? It's... It's very cool. However... Right, uh, just for the sake of cinematic elements. I think it's like an eight out of 10, right? It's cool, but it doesn't nearly encapsulate the raw power and absolute just let this shit loose feeling that Saul's Dragon Install has in previous games. Saul's Dragon Install is like, I'm not even talking about it being better. I'm not even talking about actual functionality. I'm just talking about fun factor. Like what Saul gets with his Dragon Install is so much more fucking crazy and insane. Well, this one does have a cool piece of animation and he does, he does change visually. He doesn't change nearly as much as Soul does. So yeah, Soul's Dragon Install, he's, he's like, I just become a monster for a, a small period of time. And this one, he's like, I'm a little bit better, you know? He's, been, he's a bit more controlled. Yeah. So, well, I still think it's a cool looking super. I think there's a lot to be desired considering, considering the history. Does Nago not have a forward dash? This is the first time I've ever used the character, by the way. So his super. I think this is clearly and and absolutely one of the better looking supers in the game. I'm pretty confident in giving this super with Nago like a nine out of 10. 
I don't think it blows my mind, like, completely. But compared to the other supers that we, I think we've seen in the game, definitely has some really cool visual stuff going on. Ugh. And while this super is cool because of how much damage it does, the home run, I think it's like a five, dude. It's like the most basic, it's just a batter up, like kind of thing. I genuinely wish if you like landed this thing, I do like its utility, how, how far of range it goes but I just wish there was like some other element to it that made it like look especially visually crazy. So I think it's only okay. I think it has crazy damage, but I don't think it visually is that nuts. It, once again, baseball bat super. Feels good to land, but it's like single slap, five out of 10. Damn dude, Milia looks fucking ridiculous. Look at this walk cycle. Just look at her neutral animations. I would love to like this character, except I have a friend that has been playing this character since the early 2000s and I hate her. That's just the way it is. Not bad, right? Not bad. Ooh, that looked cool, especially with the wall break. I like it. I think it's like a 7 out of 10. You know, fancy flourishing super, a classic, if you will. She's had it in like almost all of the games she's been in. Yeah, I think even going back to Guilty Gear 1, this thing was present. Cool looking, right? Very cool looking. Where's the other one? Then once again, we have a utility super. This is like almost identical to the stuff we were talking about with Kai. At least she's like creating a blade with her hair. So it's, it's all right. I would not dare give this anything beyond like a four out of 10. All right, Chip. Damn, looking at the super on inspection, it just like keeps going too. Goes up again. This super is a nine out of 10. I mean, I'm gonna argue that I kind of want to give it a 10. Kind of want to give it a 10 out of 10, but maybe upon visiting other characters, we'll see. We'll see if my mind changes, but I think that's actually a ridiculously good looking super. I never really paid attention to it because I'm always trying to dodge it and I'm like playing the game and not really looking at the game, uh, appreciating the game. Anyway, uh... <laughs> This one's okay, right? It's the basic, like, um, it's the basic, like, blitz kind of super. It's still really cool, right? I still would give Chip, like, an 8 out of 10 for this one. I think it looks fantastic still. Weirdly enough, I think Chip might have a couple of the best supers in the game, at least visually, you know? It's not just, like, a utility super like some of the other characters we've seen that have. All right, May. So that's like her utility super, and it's a giant orca that flies up out of the screen. And for being a utility super, it is definitely one of the better ones because it's a huge fucking orca. I think I kind of want to give it a six, right? Let's give that one a six out of 10 because at least it's kind of like sort of interesting. That did a lot of damage. How, how far does this damn whale go? Very far. Giant whale. I think I actually like this one more. Right? Effectively like a similar super. I think the, the big old buildup for Yamada is really neat, but I kind of like the, the speediness of the Orca one. I think I'm both giving them a six out of 10 is what I'm trying to say. What the hell are Zato's supers in this game? This one's really neat, actually. I kind of love it. Does it go full screen? Then it's a huge ass shark. All right, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it some. It's got some cool dynamic elements. It's got an interesting light thing going on in here. Yeah, I kind of like it. The payoff is definitely more utility, but it's got some cool, weird, dramatic moments. So I give this one like an eight out of ten. I don't mind it. But this one, I think this one's the sword, right? And once again, this is like a utility super that sets up Eddie to do things. And that one I give like, once again, kind of like a four. You can do it in the air. And it does actually wall break. I didn't even know that. 
He's just throwing a sword, right? The, the, this super isn't meant to be like flashy and crazy. It's meant to just set up for something and it just isn't as dramatic as the previous one. So I kind of give this one like a four out of 10. Yeah, he has a command grab that's cooler than that shit. Okay, Eno, uh, what do you got? So I think she actually gets a command grab up close. So that's like the far version, right? Reference to uh, the classic Eno fight that is in Guilty Gear X when she was first to last boss, I think. And then... See, this one's really great. Like, holy hell. I think the far projectile one is like... This is like a six, but this one... But this one is super sick, man. They really try to emulate that crazy ass super that was like almost create like unavoidable to get hit by. I'm gonna give it like a nine, right? I think this one's I think this one's worthy a nine, not an eight. I think it's definitely a nine out of ten kind of super. So this one is her utility super. And uh pretty much looks like utility. You'd almost have to slow it down to get an understanding of what the hell's going on. But um, I'll give that one a down the middle, like a tyrant rave sort of situation, right? This is like a five out of 10. Doesn't do anything crazy visually. It did, some utility supers look better than others in this game, but generally being a utility super for a lot of characters, they're not gonna be super crazy flourishes, you know? Angie, I think the first one is this. Yeah, that's it, but I gotta do the other one. So this is his utility super as well. Um, technically. With a big cinematic flourish. I don't know if I love the, like, peering through the world between the fans and shit. I think, I think the effect of this is not, like... <laughs> I think it's definitely weird. Um, I give this one, like, a 6 out of 10. S 6 out of 10 for me, personally. This one's really cool. Right? I think, what is it, Kacho Fugetsu, the, the counter super? Actually looks kind of great. Without any huge, crazy cinematic elements, it manages to be a really neat looking counter super. I don't think it's exemplary, but I think it's at least a seven out of 10, right? I'll give it a seven out of 10. And just counter pose is the same as Bike and Sperry and XR, where she holds like the blade behind her head. Yeah, a little bit. Foost. So the epitome of a utility super that is just here to cause chaos. There was some shit you could do. I saw people doing this in Xard, and you can like break the game. You can like crash the game way back in the day. Anyway, it's a utility super, right? He's doing like literally nothing crazy. He's just tossing out random items that you already normally toss out by doing this kind of stuff. Except he just throws out a whole bunch. To me, it, we're talking about like, not effectiveness, but as far as visual supers, this one's like a two out of 10, you know? There's just nothing really sick about it. But this one, where you can throw out an absolute shit ton of stuff, is a little bit better because he just goes and throws everything at the same time. And that one I'll give a three out of 10. Right, using full meter to do 12 fucking items or something like that. It's it's funny and goofy, but it's a repeated animation of something he already has, right? So I, I can't, I can't, for all the other characters that get all this unique shit, I can't give it any crazy credit. However. <laughs> her face. Just to show off a couple of different examples of the unique elements that this super has. <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> Whoa, what? Because he's bent over the other the other way. He lands like face first. The hell there's like other it's like the paper bag guys he throws from up here, right? How funny. 
Now I understand why everyone likes this one. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. God, man. I now I completely understand why everyone was like, check out Giovanna's. Anyway, uh, Faust gets a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 super kind of character. He currently has the best super in the whole goddamn game. I only, I only remember one super with Axel. That's not it. Oh! That's right. This bitch gets the... The crazy thing is that you never see Axels do this. This seems like the most ridiculous, overpowered thing in the world. But a lot of Axels don't end up using this move at higher levels, so I, oh, I actually forgot he has this move. I actually forgot, and this is his utility super. In the vein of a utility super, it's amazing, right? It, it literally stops time, allows you to run in and do a bunch of crazy shit, has a cool effect where it makes the whole background and, and, and music stops and everything. It's like, wow, a utility super that really like changes the pace of the whole game. And I think it's genuinely cool. I think this, in, in terms of utility super, is about like the coolest you possibly could make it, especially when he like snaps and like gets you to stop in place. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's like an eight out of ten in terms of utility supers. You know, and you can time stop other supers. That's awesome. That's that's really that's really fucking cool. And here's the one that you mostly see because this is his wake up. Big, annoying wake-up attack. It's a double fireball, so it's a lot easier to do. Um, and it's all right. Brian, big cinematic flourish at the beginning for him just to slap you away with some fire chains. This is like a six out of 10 tyrant rave, five or six out of 10 tyrant rave kind of situation, you know? It's okay. So, uh, Leo's first super is from Backstance, and it's this. Just throws a big blade. Um, and as great as this super is gameplay wise for like a multitude of reasons, fantastic super, unfortunately doesn't look great in any way at all. Like the wind up is neat. But what he eventually does with it is like, oh, and it's just over. That's it. So to me, this is like a four out of 10. Uh, this is kind of anticlimactic with a neat flourish at the beginning. And then he gets his big super here. This one's okay. Even this super I don't think is great for being like for example, the other another character that does a super similar to this is Chip with that like where he, three ninja clones and stuff like that and he whoops your ass. This is sort of like that. But to me just not as good. Like this one's only okay. It's like functional, has a crazy cool looking pose in the end. It's like a six, right? It's like a five to a six out of 10. Leo's obviously like my character I'm playing the most in this game, but it's a Weapon X Weapon X Super, but I think it's less than a Weapon X Super. I actually like Weapon X Super way more. So Barrier Super with Potemkin, he gets his Aegis Reflector. This is definitely the epitome of, this is just to get people off of you, you know? This one's like a, uh, like a two out of 10. This might be one of the lowest rated ones because he doesn't really do anything cool at all. And it's, yeah, and if it hits you once, it splashes you away. I don't know, man. I'm still sticking with like, it's like a two out of 10. I, I, I just can't get, can't get me to say anything really good about it. Okay, here we go. Boss ass. So clearly, this is a um, this is a 10 out of 10 super kind of situation. Clearly, this is like the bee's knees in terms of supers. Yeah, Geo's like bored by it. However, <laughs> everyone's just sort of grimacing. It's a 10 out of 10. What can I say? It's absolutely a 10 out of 10. There's no way that you can give possibly one of the best looking command grab supers in the whole game, anything less in the whole franchise, much less fighting game history. It's one of the best command grab supers there is. They, they legit want you to feel super accomplished by landing this shit, you know? Oh, no wonder everyone can do this. It's double fireball forward. That's unfair. This fucking super is utility. It's ridiculously good. 
insanely good. And it's like a three out of 10. It's super lame looking. This is essentially the final flash equivalent, right? Final flash proton cannon. Shinku Hadoken equivalent of a super. And since it's essentially a typical beam with a flourish, it's a bit better than a five out of 10. So I'm gonna give it a six. Yeah, Geo's got a couple. I remember this one. Hmm. This one without the wall break is very uneventful, right? But with the wall break, I think it's a bit better. Eh, not really. She really just does like spinning bird kick and that's it. Huh. I think it's okay. Right, once again, I think this is like a six, maybe a seven. I think I do like it more than the previous one we saw. So I'm going to give this one a seven. I'd like it a little bit more. Uh, however. This one is sick as hell. You're getting bounced between the dog and her and she's juggling the shit out of you. Great. I think this is the best barrage super in the game. Um. And like, what's a barrage super? We saw it earlier with um, with Chip. It's essentially the same thing with Leo, which is like a Weapon X super where they just do a whole bunch of like normal attacks, but they finish it off with a big, a big flourish. This is the best looking barrage super in the whole game. For sure, super cool. I give this one like a nine out of 10. I think it's great. You know what's funny? This is what we all wanted from this character when we saw her. We wanted her to actually be able to like utilize the dog in combo, but I think that that's getting a little too guilty geary for like, you know, Guilty Gear Strive, like, making the characters not as nutty as they were in the previous games. I think that's what a lot of people were anticipating she was going to be like. Like, you would be able to put the dog behind them and then bounce them back into you. Truly wish Giovanna was, like, a version of Zato, right? Where you essentially can use the dog to do things like Eddie. I kind of wish it was like that. But this, this super is, like, perfectly an example of what I really wanted Geo to be like. I wanted her, I wanted her to be able to do stuff like that without having to do a super, which is why I like the super, you know? So, nine out of 10. So who got the best supers? Definitely Nago. I think Chip overall gets the best supers in the game, overall. Eno's had a pretty good one. Giovanna had a great one. Potemkin gets one of the best supers in fighting games, period. And then Faust also has, gets one of the best cinematic supers in the whole game too. So there's a few in here that are very good, but I think in the scale of Guilty Gear's Strive, None of the supers in this game match the intensity or absolute audaciousness that is friggin' insta-kills from Guilty Gear x -Hard. Nothing in this game matches what IKs set up for. I think IKs are kind of daunting because the supers in this game have a huge amount of animation. The individual unique animation frames that they're making for every character is almost running on ones, meaning that there's like 24 to 30 actual frames of animation in some, in some cases. And that's a lot, dude. That's a lot of anim to have to deal with on the developer front. So I think especially when it came to the, the intros and some of the windscreens and stuff like that, I think they want to match that quality and they probably could not match that quality. They wanted to hit the deadline and release date that they were looking for. They're too busy fucking up the lobbies. Sorry, Guilty Gear Stripe has some pretty good supers. I don't think it matches XR in terms of crazy cinematic shit, but I think there's going to be definitely some hope in the future for the big stuff that I'm really looking forward to doing a rate series on which is things like insta-kills and how uh, nutty insta-kills might be. But I think insta-kills are going to be way far out. I think that's not going to be until you get Guilty Gear Striven, which is like the first big expansion to the game, the Revelator. I think that's going to happen. So you might have to wait a year and a half to two years for that to eventually show up.